Hey, this is Professor Beaver. Hope you are having a good day. Any physical quantities that require both magnitude and direction for its description is known as a vector quantity. As direction is also concerned in a vector, we cannot simply find out the resultant of such physical quantities just by operating with their magnitudes. The resultant will also be a vector quantity and will have some direction which may or may not be in the same direction as the operators. For example, you may know how a truck being pulled by two strong men in an inclined direction as shown in this results into the truck moving forward. Here, it can be seen that the resultant is directed along a different line as compared to the applied vector's direction. Let us see in brief how these vectors are actually operated. Let us first look at addition and subtraction of vectors. Now take a note that negative of any vector is the same as the original vector with no difference in its magnitude but its direction will be completely reversed. So we can just change the direction when we are asked to subtract and then carry out the same procedure as in addition. Addition of vectors can be done by different methods. One of them is polygon method. It can be also called as a triangle method when only two vectors are being added. In this method, head of one vector is connected to the tail of the other vector. The resultant vector will be along the third side and will be directed as seen. This is the easiest method to graphically calculate the direction, especially when more than two vectors are involved. For example, if you have more than two vectors, then you can apply the same principle of joining the heads and the tails of the corresponding vectors. For example, in this case, the head of the first vector is joined to the tail of the second vector and the head of the second vector will be joined to the tail of the third vector and the resultant will be given by the final side to form a polygon directed from the tail of the first vector to the head of the last vector. For calculating the magnitude, use of sine law and cosine law is sufficient where the length is taken proportional to the vector quantity and the direction can be obtained by simply calculating the angles between the triangular sides. The second method is a parallelogram method. This method can be used for addition or subtraction of two vectors at a time only. In this method, the two vectors should have the same point of origin and should move away from that point. If they don't, you can always displace them, but make sure that you maintain the length and the angle of this vector. A parallelogram is drawn using the copies of the two vectors which should be placed parallel to itself and at a distance equal to the other vector. The resultant vector will be now placed along the diagonal of this parallelogram. The direction will be from the point of origin of two vectors towards the opposite edge. The magnitude and the resultant will be given as under root of vector 1 squared plus vector 2 squared plus twice of vector 1 and vector 2 times cosine of angle between the vectors. This here is a modified cosine law where the negative sign is just replaced by a positive sign. That's it for now. We'll be discussing more about the multiplication of two vectors and also on some examples how to solve in the next videos.